Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sone. If you watched the last video, you realize that completing the square with harder problems is just a mess. But luckily, there is potentially an easier way. So if you have a 3x squared minus a 7x plus a 5 is equal to 0, that is a mess of a problem and you would not want to complete the square, and it does not factor. Nothing multiplies to 15 but adds to negative 7. So if that's the case, if all the numbers are ugly and you can't do anything else, there is a formula called the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And if you use this formula, you can solve every problem that is a quadratic with this formula. Every single one. It is the ultimate formula, but it is longer. Uh, it's only, to, in my opinion, to be used when it's not factorable and completing the square is rough. All right. Your a, your b, and your c are the numbers in front of the x squared, the, the x and the, the plain old number respectively. You do need to make sure it is equal to zero, and then you just begin. So negative b, if b is already negative seven, would be positive 7 because negative negative 7 makes positive 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 in parentheses squared. Anytime you're putting something in for a variable, I would recommend you put it in parentheses like I'm doing. Times a, which is 3, times c, which is 5, all over 2a, which is 2 times 3. So we just do this square root part first. 7 squared minus 4 times 3 times 5, which ends up being 7 plus or minus the square root of 49. Negative 4 times negative 5 and 3 all multiplied together end up being negative 60. And 2 times 3 is 6. So 49 minus 60 is 7 plus or minus the 49 minus 60 is negative 11 all over 6. And the square root of negative 11 does not simplify, but you do have the option, and not an option at all really, of taking out the i because it is the square root of a negative number and putting it over 6. Now this is a perfectly acceptable answer, but you are allowed and sometimes need to split up that fraction which you are allowed to do because you're dividing by one thing. And the purpose of doing this is because sometimes 7 over 6 or something like that could simplify. Imagine if that was 12 over 6. You would simplify it. All right? So that's the answer. That's the quadratic formula, and that is all she wrote. We're going to do a few more just to see how it works out. Let's say you got a negative 4x squared minus 8x plus 3. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I think that'll work. I'm hoping it's not factorable, but I think it might be. Well, you know what would definitely make it not factorable? If I do minus like 11 here. I feel like that would make it not factorable. Add the 11 over. Because it does not work if it's not equal to 0. If we add 11, we get 14 is equal to 0. Then... We can use the quadratic formula, and you are allowed to, if you recognize this, these all divide by 2. If you wanted to divide them by 2, you're absolutely allowed to do that, and I would recommend it, because if you divide by 2, there's a few benefits. First benefit, the numbers are smaller. Um, if you divide by 2, 4 divided by 2 is 2. It was negative, so it stays negative. 8 divided by 2 is 4. It was negative, so it stays negative. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. Okay, so much smaller numbers, much more manageable. If you wanted to divide by negative 1 because you don't like the negative 2x squared, you're also allowed to do that. That's something I would do a lot because I don't like a negative x squared if I can avoid it, but I feel like we need to see it in this case. All right, quadratic formula time. Negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So negative b would be a negative negative 4, which will turn into positive 4 Negative 4 in parentheses squared is positive 16. If you do not put it in parentheses with your calculator, it will lie to you and tell you it's negative 16 minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. 
So your A and your B and your C came from right there, and I just plugged them in. I'm going to do a little bit of math here. Negative negative 4 is positive 4, plus or minus the square root of 16. Uh, negative 4 times all this stuff is going to be, oh, let's do some math. We got 8 times 7, which is 56 the last time I checked. I always struggle with 8 times 7, though. So if it's not 56, I apologize because you never know. You can make mistakes. Uh, what's 14 times 4? Now I'm second guessing it. 40 and 16. Yeah, it's 56. Good grief. Um, add the 16 and the 56 together and you get 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 and 56 is equal to 60 and 12. 72 all over negative 4. Out of room. And then you have to do the simplifying of the 72 because 72 does simplify down. You can do that off to the side somewhere. Right here looks good for me. 72 is 2 times 36. And if you're smart, you may recognize that 6 and 6 go into 36. If you don't recognize that, you got to break it down further. But if you recognize that the square root of 36 is just a 6 and a 6, you can take that out right from the beginning and leave the 2 left over. So we have 6 square root of 2 all over negative 4. And here is where splitting this up will be a lot easier. If we split up the 4, and we end up with something that looks like this. Now it is important to note that this 2 over 4 does not simplify because that's a square root of 2. So that's not going to simplify. But 4 divided by negative 4 is negative 1. And 6 divided by negative 4 doesn't divide, but it simplifies. 6 and 4 both divide by 2. It simplifies to negative 3 over 2 with the square root of 2. Now, this is the answer. You can circle it. Um, but, but I implore you to think. This plus or minus means that we are adding and subtracting this, which incorporates a very unique and funny thing. If I were to write this out and add the negative square root of 2, oh man, if I were to write this out and write negative 1 plus negative 3 square root of 2 over 2 and negative 1 minus a negative square, 3 square root of 2 over 2. What happens with the minus a negative? It turns into a plus a positive. And what happens if you're like adding a negative? It's just right the same as a minus. So even though this is negative, a lot of answer choices will not include it because the plus or minus is going to negate the fact that this was negative all along. Not to be confused if this was negative on the inside, which would incorporate a negative, like an imaginary number, but if there's a negative here, sometimes they will not write that at all and it will just fizzle away. And if you're wondering what the heck happened, it's because the plus or minus kind of made it null and void. All right? So quadratic formula is longer. I, I think you realize that. But it is a way out from completing the square. It's also a way to guarantee that it will always work. Factoring doesn't always work. Completing the square will always work, but it's, it's very ugly sometimes. And this is consistently just meh. Quadratic formula is consistently okay. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, I will see everybody later, and have a great day. Bye.